What's the latest on the injury situations regarding Kevin Fiala, Gabe Velarde, and Sean Dersey? Plus, as the season winds down, we take a look back and forward at the LA Kings season. All that and more on this edition of Locked on LA Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you are enjoying this content. My name is Eddie Garcia. I'm your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've been working in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co-host of the Puck Podcast. It's a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 16 years and a passionate LA Kings fan. For the past 30 years. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. With this break in the action for the LA Kings, a couple days off before their next game, I thought it might be a good time to take a look back on the season so far and see how the Kings got to where they are at this point as we get ready for the playoffs and the LA Kings. Uh, certainly have had an eventful season so far. But before we get into that, I did want to update you on the latest as far as the injury situations going on between uh, Kevin Kevin Fiala, Gabe Lardy, and Sean Dursey. Um, according to Kings insider Zach Dooley and Russell Morgan of Hockey Royalty, who's going to join us on tomorrow's show, uh, they were at practice this morning for the LA Kings, uh, and they said uh, that uh, there are some updates to tell you about. Regarding those three players, we'll start with the Kings' leading scorer, Kevin Fiala, who has missed the last five games with a lower body injury after that knee-on-knee hit from Andrew Cogliano against the Colorado Avalanche on March the 9th. Uh, We did not have any word um, that Fiala had been skating since that injury, but today at practice, Kings head coach Todd McClellan said that Kevin Fiala did skate on his own today and will skate again tomorrow. Now, no details on when Fiala might return to practice or game action. Um, but for obviously, this is a positive step for Kevin Fiala. Uh, we had not heard that he had skated to this point, but he did skate today. Uh, he had been apparently off of the ice for the past 12 days, uh, but certainly good news. It, it appears that Kevin Fiala is back on the ice. Um, the Kings have been okay without him so far, 3-0-2. and um, Fiala, of course, leading the Kings in the points with 46 um, and certainly he, pay, he plays key minutes on the Kings' number one power play unit uh, and also is probably the Kings' best player um, this side of Adrian Kempe that can really create instant offense for the Kings. So he's a key contributor without any question. Kings are going to need him healthy or at least as healthy as possible uh, going into the playoffs if they're going to make a deep run this postseason. So baby steps for Kevin Fiala, back on the ice skating, uh, judging by how he will feel coming up tomorrow based on what he did today will determine where he goes from here. Hopefully there's no issues, there's no setbacks, and if that's the case, uh, then I would anticipate in the next few days, probably next week, he, he returns to practice with the Kings. If everything goes well there, then they get him back into game action. I would say in the next two weeks, I would expect to see him on the ice again, barring any kind of setbacks, probably even before that, to be honest with you. Um, but we shall see. As for Gabe Velarde, uh, he is third on the LA Kings in goal scoring. He went down in the Kings' last game against Calgary with an undisclosed injury, fell into the boards in the third period, didn't return. Um, He did not skate today, but again, Kings head coach Todd McClellan said that he should be joining Kevin Fiala, skating on his own coming up tomorrow. Where we go from there um, would, again, seem to be dictated by how he feels, and again, no setbacks. Um, seems unlikely that either Fiala or Velarde are going to play any games here uh, in the next couple, but but we'll see. Again, um, it is a good sign that they're back skating, and, and just with Kevin Fiala, the same as Kevin Fiala for Gabe Velarde, it's skating uh, on his own, not experiencing any discomfort or setbacks. Then he would probably join the Kings in practice, and then barring any setbacks, everything positive there then you get back into game situations. Uh, Russell Morgan reported that Arthur Kaliev was skating in practice 
on the Kings third line in place of Gabe Velarde. Uh, so we would expect to see that uh, uh, Arthur Kalia playing on the third line in Velarde's spot coming up this Saturday uh, when the Kings host the Winnipeg Jets. And I would, I would expect Arthur Kaliev to be on the second power play unit for the Kings as well. Um, hard to speculate on when either Fiala and Velarde might return, especially for Velarde, since we don't exactly know what he's dealing with. Uh, I don't even know that they've set upper or lower body uh, for Fiala. We know it's a knee issue. Um, and, and obviously there's no need to rush either of them back at this point. Uh, the Kings haven't officially clinched a playoff spot, but realistically they have. Um, there's still obviously important games to be played as far as seating, um, things like that. Um, but again, the most important thing is to have those two guys who have had great offensive seasons ready to go uh, once the playoff starts. As for defenseman Sean Dursey, uh, remember he took that hit to the head against the Capitals. He's missed the last six games. He was skating on his own over the weekend. Today, he was back at practice. Um, he was wearing a red non-contact jersey, but taking part in practice. Head coach Todd McClellan said that Dursey should, quote, take a step forward tomorrow. Uh, translation to me is that Dursey, if he feels well enough, is going to skate without the red jersey on uh, and see how he responds in practice. And if that goes well, then obviously uh, he would be in game action probably before we see Fiala or Velarde because he seems to be a step ahead of them. But the one caveat there is that while Fiala's a knee and Velarde, we're not sure, but we're, we don't believe it's any kind of a head injury. That's not the case for Sean Dursey. He is dealing almost certainly with, with uh, post-concussion issues, or I should say he's dealing, he's recovering from a concussion. Could be a slight concussion, but he definitely got hit in the head. So it seems reasonable to assume that that is the situation. And with, with head injuries, uh, obviously you want to be very careful with that. Um, and it's not something that, you know, if, if it's a knee or a shoulder or something like that, you can put a pretty decent timetable on how long that typically will take for a player to return. Yeah, everybody's bodies is different, but there's still a general idea. But with concussions, everybody responds to those things differently. Um, he could be back as soon as this Saturday. Maybe they take a few more extra days. Certainly, again, you want to be cautious with it. So uh, it looks like Sean Dursey, though, is closer to returning uh, to the ice for the LA Kings. Um, once that happens, then Sean Walker would draw out of the lineup and, and Dursey would be back on that third pairing with Alex Edler. Not sure if it will happen at this point this Saturday or not, but it, I think it's a possibility judging by what happens with um, Sean Dursey in practice coming up tomorrow. Uh, it will be interesting to see, and I do think that all of this is encouraging news, to eventually see where things go, barring any more injuries, of course, barring any setbacks. But if Fiala and Velarde come back completely healthy and ready to go, um, where does that leave the Kings as far as how the lineup shakes out? You would expect that Kevin Fiala will slot back in on the third line. So will Gabe Velarde. And then what do you do with Alex Iafalo? Do you slide him down to the fourth line? If you do, are you going to take Carl Grunstrom out of the lineup? Because Grunstrom has played very, very well lately. Um, maybe, it, maybe it means that Iafalo is out of the lineup for now. Um, either way, there hopefully there are going to be difficult decisions to be made because the Kings are healthy and everyone's back. Um, it is a good, uh, it's a good problem to have to have too many players. Oh, gee, where am I going to play all these players? Um, so I think Carl Grunstrom though has kind of complicated things a little bit, if you want to call it that, because of the way he has played so well of late. But uh, the bottom six uh, certainly looks like it's going to be a strength for the Kings going forward, um, and that's not the case for every team in the NHL that makes the playoffs. All right, so now that we've uh, updated you on the injury issues, um, as I mentioned, we've got a few extra days in between games. I thought it would be a good time to look back and forward at the LA Kings season at this point. And I think the journey of where the Kings were uh, and where they are now is certainly a very interesting one. And to me, there are two key points of the season so far for the LA Kings. And we remember when the season started, the Kings were up and down. At times, they looked good. At times, not so good. And over the first 31 games, they had a record of 15, 11, and 5. And then came two games that changed the course of the season. December 13th in Buffalo and December 15th in Boston. I'm sure you remember the Kings playing the Sabres on the road, a scoreless game going to the third, and then a complete disaster as Buffalo scored six goals in the third period. Remember how excited we were the other night when the when the Kings scored four goals in the first period against the Flames. Six goals allowed in a period. 
um, obviously was embarrassing to the Kings. And as you might expect, it certainly appeared that that game was a bit of a wake-up call because the next game in Boston was against the top team in the NHL. And you've probably been paying attention, or even if you haven't really been paying attention, you probably know the Bruins right now are a historically good team. They're on pace to have more wins in a single season than any team in the history of the NHL. So in that game, the Kings fall behind 2 nothing. Then in the third period, Adrian Kempe scores a pair of goals to tie it up, goes to overtime, and eventually Trevor Moore wins it in the shootout. And the Kings, again, being embarrassed one night, coming back and getting the biggest win of the season the, uh, in their next game, really seemed to spark the Kings, got them to buy in, and it showed them a couple of things. Uh, when we don't play the right way, this is what happens. And when we do play the right way, look what we're capable of. So wanted to get into some numbers uh, for the LA Kings after that win over the Boston Bruins and how things have changed since then. Uh, before we get into that, I do want to remind you that today's episode of Locked on LA Kings is brought to you by FanDuel. Uh, we are now past the midway point of the NBA season, uh, winding down the season there as well. And it's the perfect time for you to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's a bonus bet back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to points scored to three-pointers made. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get your first your uh, no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. So I'm not huge into a lot of the analytics, the advanced analytics, like a lot of people are, but I know that statistics can be something that uh, shows evidence of how things have changed positively or negatively. And we're going to look at some of the kind of basic numbers involved in the LA Kings and how things have improved um, for the Kings since that went over Boston and up to the trade deadline, because I think that's the next kind of key point in the LA Kings season. So heading into that Kings game against Boston on De December 15th, the Kings were doing okay. Uh, they were 15th in the NHL in wins, 13th in points. Uh, their goals per game was at 3.31 and their goals against was at 3.69. Uh, their goal differential was a minus 12. The power play was scoring at 23.4% of the time, and the Kings penalty kill was killing off 70.4% of the power plays against. Now, after the Boston game, and up until that key moment of the season, the, the trade deadline acquiring Jonas Corposalo and Vladislav Gabrikov, the Kings made some pretty significant movement in those key areas. So after the Boston win, uh, LA went from 15th in the NHL in wins to 6th. They went from 13th in the NHL in points to 5th. The goals per game went from 14th to 9th, 3.31 to 3.5. The goals allowed per game went from 27th in the league to 16th. They were allowing 2.39 goals per game. And then after the Boston win up to the trade deadline, it was at 3.10. Uh, the goal differential went from minus 12, 23rd in the NHL, to plus 12, 9th. In the NHL, the power play percentage went from 13th in the NHL to second, 23.4% uh, to 28.1%. And the penalty kill went from 28th in the league, 70.4%, to 16th at 81.4%. All obviously some pretty significant improvements across the board. Uh, again, whether it was the embarrassment of that ugly loss to Buffalo or the confidence uh, in the comeback win over Boston, or maybe a combination of the two, uh, there's no question the Kings have been a different team since those two games and uh, after those two games. Uh, and the the, st the stats uh, certainly bear that out. I think the next key spot in the Kings season certainly has been more recent, and that was the trade to bring in goaltender Jonas Corposalo and defenseman Vladislav Gavrikov. Uh, it's a smaller sample size, but if you look at the Kings' numbers, they've taken yet another step forward. Uh, in some of the key statistics, uh, the Kings went from sixth in the NHL in wins. That was from the Boston victory to the trade deadline. Uh, and since then, they're now third in the NHL in wins. 
Uh, the Kings went from fifth in the NHL in points to second. Uh, the goals per game has jumped from 3.5, which was ninth in the NHL, to four, which is fourth in the NHL. And the goals allowed went from 16th, 3.13 per game, to number one in the NHL at two goals allowed per game. Again, this is since the trade deadline. The goal differential since the Kings trade has them, they were a plus 12 in goal differential from after the Boston game to the deadline. And that was ninth in the NHL. They're now a plus 18 since the trade deadline. That is number one in the NHL. Now, the special teams have taken a bit of a step back since the deadline. Power play uh, is just at 16.1% and the penalty kill at 76.9%. But overall, uh, the Kings, again, pretty clearly have taken another step forward than they had from the win over Boston and how they had played up to the deadline. Uh, of course, they're currently riding a 10-game point streak with a record of 8 Oh, and two. So again, looking at the season on the whole for the Kings, starting off a little bit up and down, then you have that clear moment with the Buffalo and the Boston game and where the Kings have gone from there to the trade deadline has been one of the big reasons why obviously they have gone from being a borderline playoff team to a contender for the Pacific Division title and having one of the best records in the Western Conference. And then they've even taken yet another step maybe a half step forward uh, since the trade deadline, maybe more than a half step forward uh, since the trade dead deadline as well. So there've been some key moments. Those to me, were, those are the key two moments. When you look at the story of the Kings, though, so far this season, the loss to Buffalo, the win over Boston, and then to the trade deadline. And now since uh, taking even another step forward. And when you look at the story of the LA Kings, and obviously the final chapter is yet to be written. We're looking forward and excited to see how that goes in the playoffs. Um, but there have been another couple of key moments, I think, along the way that have, uh, you know, kind of been the, the development of this season for the Kings. I think one of them certainly would be when GM Rob Blake had that closed door meeting after that 9-8 loss to the Kraken um, and obviously called the team out to improve on the penalty kill specifically, which they have done. Um, overall, it's been, you know, much better. Uh, on the season, the penalty kill since Rob Blake had that conversation. Also going hand in hand with that was the Kings clarifying their goaltending situation. Um, after the loss to Seattle, remember, Cal Peterson was placed on waivers and then sent down to the AHL. We've got some more news on Cal coming up. Unfortunately, it's not great news. Um, but that move allowed Phoenix Copley to be called up from the Ontario Reign, going from the backup in the AHL to the backup in the NHL, and eventually him taking over the number one spot from Jonathan Quick, and obviously that has been a very key moment for the LA Kings this season. Uh, certainly that was something that nobody could have predicted, including Phoenix Copley. It's been one of the better stories in the NHL all season. That is, uh, you know, to this point, had Phoenix Copley record a 22-4-3 and three record. And I think we've almost become a little bit numb to that. But when you sit back and you think about it and consider again where he came from and where he is now, that is astounding. 22-4-3. The record for Phoenix Copley, who has really come in and obviously played a huge role in the Kings season so far. Um, I mean, coming out of nowhere, nobody could have predicted this, including Phoenix Copley. Uh, his winning percentage of 688 is fourth best in the NHL. He has 22 wins in 31 starts, which is unbelievable. Uh, we'll see how his story finishes out, but the Kings certainly are more strong in net because of what they did at the trade deadline to get Jonas Corposalo, but even at that point, Phoenix Copley has stepped up his game since the trade deadline as well. I think one other key moment that you have to bring up was moving Quinton Byfield to the top line and shifting him over to the wing, which took place on December the 31st. And whether you want to give QB credit or not, the numbers are clear. The Kings top line is much better with Quinton Byfield than without him. And that means Andre Kopitar and Adrian Kempe have taken pretty significant step forward at, with Quentin Byfield playing on their line. Kopitar had 10 goals and 29 points in 40 games without Quentin Byfield. Uh, in the 32 games since Quentin Byfield joined the line, he's got 16 goals and 36 points. Again, that's in eight fewer games. He has six more goals and seven more points. And Adrian Kempe had 40, uh, excuse me, 14 goals and 24 points in 40 games without Quentin Byfield. Since Byfield has joined the line, Again, 32 games for Kente. He's got 21 goals and 32 points. Again, eight fewer games with Byfield than uh, without him. 
and yet he's got seven more goals and eight more points. So again, um, I know there's still some out there and, and I'm not, I understand this, the skepticism uh, of what Quinton Byfield has brought to the top line, but sometimes the numbers lie and sometimes they don't lie. And I think in this case, they don't lie again, that top line has become more of a top line with Quinton Byfield on the lineup or in that line. So now that we've taken a look back, we're going to take a quick look forward and see what's coming up next for the Kings. But real quick, I want to remind you that today's episode of Locked on LA Kings brought to you by Built Bar. Looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories? Then you got to try Built Bar. They are so delicious, you won't think you're eating something that's good for you. They're covered in 100% real chocolate, and they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, and coconut almond. Not sure how Built does it, but they taste like candy bars, not really protein bars. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you uh, can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. They're in the pharmacy section. Uh, in addition to the new flavors, they've got some of the old standards as well, like cookies and cream, double chocolate, and coconut puffs. Built Bars. Protein bars that taste like candy bars. All right, so the LA Kings have just 15 games left in what has been an eventful season so far. The team is playing some of its best hockey of the season now. Looks like it's going to be Pretty close to 100% healthy, keeping our fingers crossed as we get into the playoffs, which obviously would be great. Uh, and I think there's a lot of reason to be optimistic about the Kings postseason. But before that, uh, where will the Kings finish in the standings? Uh, the Kings currently sit in second place in the Pacific with 92 points. Now, Vegas has a two-point lead on L.A. Uh, they beat the Canucks last night 4-3 to three, to get that two-point lead. If the Kings win the division, they will have to take one of the, if they win the division, that would result in them taking on one of the wild card teams, uh, which would be either Winnipeg or Seattle. Uh, they're going to need to keep their current winning ways going because Vegas uh, is winning as well. Uh, they've played the same number of games as the Kings, but they have three more regulation wins. Uh, circle April the 6th on your calendar when these two teams will match up for the only time the rest of the season. It is a Thursday night in Las Vegas. Kings versus Golden Knights. Uh, that's going to be must see TV. Uh, by the way, I saw that the Kings, uh, excuse me, the Golden Knights number one goalie for most of the season, Logan Thompson, is apparently back off the injured list. So we'll see if he takes over that number one spot from Jonathan Quick, who obviously has played well with Vegas. Um, but uh, I, I got to believe that if Jonathan Quick is, is still on the roster, uh, probably as the number two goalie when the Kings meet the Golden Knights, I got to believe that uh, the Golden Knights head coach Bruce Cassidy is going to start Jonathan Quick uh, against the Kings. And that will be, um, for some, uh, very conflicting, but certainly, again, must-see TV. Uh, I think for a lot of people across the NHL, that that matchup is going to be circled uh, in red marker, uh, not only because of its importance in the Pacific Division, but because of all the other storylines that could be surrounding that game as well. So we told you Vegas keeps winning, the Kings keep winning, and the Oilers keep winning as well. Edmonton. Uh, right now would be the Kings opponent in the first round of the playoffs. The Kings currently have a four point lead on Edmonton and would get home ice advantage in the first round. Uh, both teams have played the same number of games. The Kings do have one more regulation win than Edmonton. Um, the Oilers are hosting the Coyotes tonight with a chance to gain ground on LA. And as hot as the Kings have been, the Oilers have been right there. They've won eight of their last 10 games. So it's been a very good thing, thing that the Kings have a 10-game point streak or else Edmonton may have overtaken them in the standings, to be honest with you. Uh, two more big games coming up for the Kings against the Oilers. Uh, March the 30th, Thursday night in Edmonton, and then April the 4th here in Los Angeles, a Tuesday night, uh, two big games that could determine who has home ice advantage in the first round uh, if that matchup holds, holds on. Uh, of the 15 games remaining for the Kings, eight of them, will be against teams currently holding down a playoff spot. We have not had a rain report in a while, and unfortunately, uh, the season for the Kings AHL affiliate isn't going well of late. The rain are currently riding a 10-game losing streak, and probably uh, of most importance to you as Kings fans is how is goaltender Cal Peterson doing in the AHL? Well, it's not going well. As a matter of fact, in his last nine games, he has a record of 0-7 and 2. His goals against average is over four, and his save percentage is around 850. And that is not good. Um, one of his recent starts against San Jose, he allowed six goals on 22 shots. On the season, Cal Peterson has a record of 13, 15, and 4 with Ontario, 
2.99 goals against average in a 9.03 save percentage. Of course, the Kings had hopes to send Cal Peterson to the AHL to help him to find his game and then eventually have him rejoin the Kings. Obviously, that has not happened for, unfortunately, for good reason. And it forced GM Rob Blake to make a move at the deadline to acquire a goaltender in Jonas Corposalo. And I think Rob Blake, on the whole, has done a very, very good job assembling a very, very good team. But the one glaring misstep that he has had to this point was that three-year, $15 million extension to Cal Peterson, which has two more years left on it. Only $1.125 million of his $5 million salary cap hit is off the books while Cal is playing in the minor leagues. Uh, it will be very interesting to see what the future holds for Cal Peterson with the LA Kings. But unfortunately, the, the plan of having him go down to the AHL, find his game, and resume his NHL career right now uh, does not look like that's going to happen. Certainly, obviously, not this season, but the way things have gone, this season in the AHL for Cal Peterson um, leaves a lot of doubt and a lot of question as to what his future is, uh, certainly with the Kings organization, but as an NHL goalie uh, on the whole. Hey, coming up on tomorrow, we were scheduled to have a special Kings fan interview uh, that has had to be rescheduled because of an illness to our guest. Uh, but we are excited to be joined by, for the first time, Russell Morgan. He is from Hockey Royalty. He covers the LA Kings and uh, looking forward to having a conversation with him about the Kings. Uh, and also coming up, don't forget on Friday, it is a fan feedback show. Your chance to share whatever your opinions are on anything going on with the LA Kings. Uh, you can always send an email feedback at uh, feedback. No, <laughs> I'm forgetting the locked on Eddie at gmail.com is the email address. You, you would think I would have that memorized saying it every day, pretty much uh, again, the email address. If you would like to send an email for the feedback show on Friday, locked on Eddie at gmail.com E D D I E. Uh, you can also post your comments on the YouTube episodes. You could send me uh, a, a direct message uh, on Twitter. If you'd like to do that. And we're also, uh, in addition to being on Twitter at locked on LA Kings, we are on Instagram as well uh, at locked on LA Kings also. Thanks for making locked on LA Kings. Your first listen. Now make your second listen. NHL game to game, every moment, every top performance, every result locked on game to game covers every game from across the NHL with local analysis that only locked on can deliver. Follow game to game on locked on NHL available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thank you for listening and watching locked on LA Kings, part of the locked on podcast network. Uh, have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow and go Kings go.